Well, well, well. It is the NFL season opening week of the 2023 season, and the big D is here with our NFL preview. Before I bring in Alice, please subscribe, like, and share the Spunky Spectrum Sports YouTube page. We can only see all the episodes of the Big D Podcast, all my live streams. But we've got UFC coming up this weekend from Sydney. We've got all kinds of other content. Also, check out the Big D Podcast for the audio listeners on Spotify and Apple. So, Dolphin Show, hmm, I wonder. The leader of the two uh, for Comeback Player of the Year, Tyree Kale and Jalen Waddle lead the Animal MVP of 2023. It must be Alex. That is me, and that is correct, Dylan. Of course, I cannot wait for this upcoming weekend. We have NFL back, and uh, it's definitely been a long wait. So uh, I think we're all excited for it to uh, for the NFL season to officially kick off tomorrow night. Yeah, with the Lions and the Chiefs from Arrowhead Stadium, uh, what uh, I could dig, I could dig some barbecue in in uh, Kansas City anytime the week, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I know one thing's for sure. Kansas City Chiefs fans are sure hoping that Travis Kelsey's eating his barbecue or whatever it takes to make sure that uh, he's good to go for tomorrow because uh, that's the last thing Chiefs fans want is uh, a season without Travis Kelsey. Or Chris Jones. Or Chris Jones. Either one of them. But well, both is worst-case scenario. Well, speaking of holdouts, one of those, one of the big holdouts just signed his deal because the 49ers uh, – Signed Nick Bosa to a uh, big, and I mean big contract. I think it's five years, $171 million. I don't know how much is guaranteed, but uh, when I saw that, when I saw that deal, I'm like, the friends of Lyman are sure eating, are sure eating pretty well at night. Yeah, you know, it's almost looking like quarterback numbers at that point. But, you know, with San Francisco, I mean, you know what they've got in San Francisco. They've got some very talented players. And the tricky thing for the for the 49ers is figuring out who you're going to have to let go eventually because they do not have very much cap space. They have a very cheap quarterback. And uh, they've got a couple other players who are looking to, uh, for a new contract as well. So, of course, you're going to pay, uh, you know, the big Bosa on the D-line. But, uh, you know, there's – it's definitely going to be a, a salary cap tango in the upcoming off seasons. But of course, you know, you're, you're going to pay Bosa and uh, you're expecting big things from that San Francisco defense this season. I mean, Nick Bosa is the best player on the best, probably the best defense in the league. And I know the Steelers said, we, Mike Tomlin said, Steelers have been preparing for him. Well, guess what? You very likely are going to get Nick Bosa on Sunday. Yeah, I mean... He's got the contract signed. I mean, it, it's pretty much all all signs pointing towards him playing. You know, it, 49ers fans are happy. I'm sure Nick Bosa is happy. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's a good day to be a 49ers fan. You just got to hope that, that Brock Purdy is the one who's going to, who's gonna uh, you know, run it, run it back for the, for the San Francisco 49ers this season. Maybe be like what a young dad press guy would be, just have the chief quarterback and have everybody expensive around him, right? Yeah, I mean, that that can work for a little while, but once you get off that rookie deal, you know quarterbacks want to get paid. Like uh, both our teams will find out eventually, or yeah. one of our teams will find out maybe eventually. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to find out very soon. It sounds like those uh, contract negotiations might be coming to an end soon, and they might be inking Joey B to a new deal, but that is uh, that is yet to be accomplished. But, uh, you know, let's move on from Joey Bosa. I know that there are a very high amount, and if anyone's been drafting fantasy football leagues in the last week or two, uh, as I know both Dylan and I have been, rookies have been off the charts this fantasy football season. I mean, I can't remember a year where you see as many rookie quarter uh, a rookie quarterback getting drafted relatively highly 
the amount of rookie wide receivers that have been going high in fantasy football this season, a first round pick and a rookie and a rookie running back this season. It just seems like rookies are taking over the NFL this year. And we have a lot of high expectations for a lot of them, including one Jameer Gibbs who might have been drafted to one of my fantasy teams last season or last night. But I want to know, Dylan, which of these rookies do you, are you most excited to watch this season? Is And I'm curious as well, you know, is there any rookies that you might – uh, that you might see having an underwhelming fantasy or not fantasy and, you know, regular football season this year. Uh, I am, ex- I am intrigued by what Anthony Richardson does this year because not just because the, my jacket was played the Colts week one, but because I think Richardson's got the highest ceiling of any of these quarterbacks, but the one was full. And we saw what Shane Shriken did with Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia. We saw what he did with uh, Justin Herbert in uh, Los Angeles. Anthony Richardson's got a ton of ability. We saw his combine walkout. 6'4", 240, ran a full four, jumped out of the gym, could throw the, could throw the ball out of a dome if need be. But he only started, what, 13 games in University of Florida, so more knows what he could be. But this guy's got all the talent in the world. Or, yeah, the Colts don't have a great wide receiver, but maybe it's like let him run the ball this year and then the Colts get Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, by the way, his dad wasn't half bad in Indianapolis, too. That's a great shout. You know, I mean, growing up as a Gator fan, you know, I've had my eyes on Anthony Richardson this past season. I know, you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of question marks around him last season uh, when it when it came to, you know, his final year at UF and. There's definitely been some question marks coming into uh, his rookie year, but you know, with the NFL quarterback position, I mean, it's it, the mobility and the and the ability to make plays happen on the ground at the quarterback position is so big, and it's become such a such a dominant part of today's NFL. I mean, it almost the 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 stand in the pocket and sling at quarterback is almost becoming extinct at this point with all of these uh, with all these mobile uh, you know quarterbacks, and it really seems like that's the way you win these days, but. You know, I'm definitely excited to see Anthony Richardson. One guy I am pumped to see is uh, one of the receivers that we had mentioned earlier, Jordan Addison. I mean, you you, repl- you 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 take a look at that Minnesota Vikings offense, and you know, Kirk Cousins. He's not one of those uh, mobile quarterbacks that that we were just talking about. He's definitely a little bit more of the uh, the stereotypical quarterback who just will stand in that pocket. But we know what he can do with uh, with Justin Jefferson, and we know what Adam Thielen did as that wide receiver number two in Minnesota for so long. Obviously, Adam Thielen's moved on to Carolina, and um, you know. Uh, Kirk Cousins needs someone to step up as that number two guy. And what what better option than Jordan Jordan Addison? I th- I, I think he's going to step in and from day one make his presence known in the NFL. Of course, the NFL defense is going up against the Minnesota Vikings. Are going to be focused on Justin Jefferson. How could you not be? He's the consensus number one in fantasy football, and he's probably the consensus number one top receiver in the NFL. So being the guy on the opposite side of him. Is a, is a guy I'd like to be, and uh, I think there's pl- going to be plenty of opportunity for Jordan Addison this year. I think there's going to be plenty of success and plenty of numbers uh, as well. So, you know, it's definitely a guy I'm going to be excited to watch. He's uh, he's definitely been a target in the mid to late rounds in fantasy football, and uh, you know, I think there's people all around uh, all around the league, not only Minnesota Vikings fans, who are going to be excited to watch him play football this season. Let me tell you this much. Uh, someone who's, by the way, Alex, take a wild guess. How many millionaire drafts have I done? Dylan, last I heard, you were up to like 143 or something. I don't know, Dylan. You've uh, that might be a slight exaggeration, but it might not even be too far off at this point. 145. No way. I was off by two. That's ridiculous. But and two, two, be millionaire. two of my favorite rookie picks this year are both in the same position. Can you guess who they are? Because you've seen a couple of my live drafts. I've definitely seen a couple of your drafts. I'm sure the man I just mentioned was one of them. Addison. In fact, I drafted him today. I drafted a, I drafted a couple teams so far. I drafted a Trevor Lawrence stack and then went Kirk Cousins, Jefferson, Addison with a, a net, with a one of with. Oddly enough, one of my rookie, favorite rookie tight ends. Oh, I know! I know you've been hunting uh, some uh, uh, 
the pa- Sam Laporta for the for the Lions for sure is one of them, and Luke Musgrave is the other one. You've been all over those guys. Bingo, bingo. They're like two of my high most exposed tight ends. Yeah. And I would have to say, you know, from the same position, I know you've been looking at at, at Mingo late in drafts, and uh, a Mr. Mims from Denver has been uh, has been a must draft for for Mr. Dylan Schmidtler lately. So yeah, you know, I don't know if I hit the mark there, but got another Mims today too. Yeah, I know you, Dylan. We've done enough drafts this off season where I know where you're going. Yeah, I mean, you should. I mean, if you look at my if one of our Yahoo teams, it looks like my best ball team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, we've been talking about how hyped these rookies are. I mean, they got to pay off for fantasy purposes too. You know, I mean, typically we see some slower starts when it comes to rookies and they're, you know, and they're and they're inaugural in a full season. But some of these guys, they look like they're ready to go. Um, uh, what, um, which player do you think is under the most pressure to win this year? Which player in general is under the most pressure to win? I mean, look, there's there's so many where it, where it comes down to. I think the number one guy has to be, in my opinion, just thinking off the dome, it's got to be Josh Allen. I mean, you look at what the Buffalo Bills have been projected to do over the last couple seasons. I mean, just thinking of Buffalo Bills fans in general, the fact that you've gone to four Super Bowls in a row and lost all of them is one thing. But the fact that you have – one of the most dominant quarterbacks at the quarterback position who can hurdle linebackers, who can run over linebackers, and who can throw at a buck 50, it seems like, at a time. You know, Josh Allen has been one of the most dominant quarterbacks in the NFL in recent history. And the fact that the Bills really, the Bills don't even have a Super Bowl appearance to show for it. I mean, I, I've got to think if I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, you know, Stefan Diggs is, 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 not the happiest over there in Buffalo, and he needs some help, and he wants to see success. We've all seen the picture of him staring at the confetti falling down. Stefan Diggs is getting frustrated, and Josh Allen is going to be wearing wearing the weight of Stefan Diggs on his shoulders, as well as Buffalo Bills Nation. They say no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, but they better start circling something this season because they get, um, you know, it's it's just. The AFC East has gotten loaded with the obvious with the obvious additions that the New York Jets have made. Obviously, the Miami Dolphins have made some moves. Patriots are pretty insignificant this year, this season, in my opinion. But um, you know, it's it's the AFC is stacked, and if the Buffalo the Buffalo Bills missed their chance, in my opinion, over the last couple of seasons to really make that Super Bowl appearance, and uh, it's only gotten harder for them. So I've got to say, you know, Josh Allen's got to be at least wearing some of that pressure because. It's only getting harder over there in the AFC East and in the AFC in general. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you might be missing your window if, it, if you wait too long before those fans. Thank you, Alex. I, you must have seen my going for two hours ago when I wrote who, when I wrote who was under the most pressure to win this year and, and Josh Allen. Yeah, you know, you've, you've taken my pick on many of these segments, so uh, I'm not too upset about taking yours on this one. Because and you look at it, last year the Buffalo there were changes with the Buffalo Bills. I mean Brian Dable left to be the Giant head coach and Josh Allen the rest. I mean I I don't know what happened at the end of the Miami game and both halves of the Miami game when the Bills self destructed. Then Minnesota where the Bills self destructed twice and then I I, I complete no show against the Bengals. Yeah, I mean. The, Dol- uh, the, the Bills were a, a botched uh, play call away from losing to Skylar Thompson in the playoffs last season. I mean, if Mike McDaniel could have gotten a couple extra plays in a couple seconds earlier, Skylar Thompson and Miami Dolphins might have beaten Buffalo in, in Buffalo in the playoffs. They almost beat them twice in the regular season. I mean, it's, it, 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 you know, you got to be confident as a Bills fan this season, but you got to be cautiously optimistic because, uh, you know, there's definitely some highs, but there definitely could be some lows in Buffalo this year. Yeah, and plus last year the Bills were everybody's Super Bowl pick. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and uh, I don't know if they're necessarily getting the accolades that uh, the preseason accolades that they have in the past this season. But uh, I think it's time to move on. Where are we going next, Dylan? Um, we jumping to we got a couple different segments. I think we could go over 
division winners? Does that sound like a plan for you? I think I think we I think we can do one more, then go division winners, division wildcard winners, and Super Bowl. So what do you want to talk about next? It's I asked you asked the you asked me the question. All right, Dell, this is your show. All right. Uh let's see. Um let's go with I want to know one head coach. I know we talked about uh, a um, a uh, an NFL player who's under the most pressure. I want to hear about one head coach that you have high expectations for this season that might not be getting as much talk as as some of the other most more, more high profile coaches in the league. Boy, you've you've got me you've got me thinking there. One coach with high expectations this year. No hmm. one one coach who might exceed expectations who isn't as high profile as others. Uh, I've got a name. I can lead it off if you want. No, I've got no. I've got a name in mind. Uh, how about a coach who? Ha- how about a coach who has never gone through a losing season in his entire coaching career? That would be Mister Mike Tomlin, because I've heard a lot of people the last couple of weeks say the Steelers look really good. The Steel the Steel wide receivers are going to be better than ever. Kane Pickett looks better than Big Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, the Steelers. I mean, are the Steelers going to be more than just a defensive team? Is the Steel will the Steel offensive line ever show up? Because I think the Steelers seem all for dang good. I mean, Ken, I think Kenny Pickett showed he could play last year. I mean, we. I think Jalen Warren can end up being the Steel running back two draft. Oh, we I, know that from our fantasy drafts. Could be the fantasy run, and then uh, we know what Deont- Deontay is bound to catch more than uh, zero touchdowns this year. George Pickens looks like can make plays. I think Pat Fry moves to sneaky good tight end option, and then defensively, TJ TJ Walton Paul, if he stays healthy, will get like twenty some on sacks again. Yeah, yeah. Plus, is- plus, you look at that division. The AFC North is a brute. Cincinnati Bengals. Let's see, Joe Burrow, Jamal Chase, T. Higgins. Yeah, they're okay. Baltimore Ravens with a new and improved with a new and improved attack. Lamar finally got weapons. Odell, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, some guy named Mark Andrews. Yeah, it's it's definitely a stacked division, and uh, but I think it's a good point. I mean, Mike Tomlin's never. Yeah, had- don't forget the Cleveland Browns with Deshaun and Kevin Stefanski, who is on the hot seat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and Mike Tomlin. I mean, it, it, he's a guy that you know he's been around NFL. He's been around the NFL for for gosh, it feels like forever at this point, and. He continues to win. He continues to have those winning seasons. Obviously, you know a lot of that was with Big Ben Roethlisberger. But uh, you know who's who's to say Kenny Pickett can't step up? I mean, we've seen some. We saw some highs. We saw some lows from him last year. Now he has an off season. He's had a full season in the NFL to kind of get up to that NFL speed. And uh, we'll see how we t- how we how he proves it in the in the second year. He definitely has the weapons, like you said. He's got one or probably two solid running backs to help him out in the run game. It's definitely a good pick, and I think Mike Tomlin, you know, he could turn some heads this season and, and doing it a little bit differently than he's done in the past. So I think that's a really good answer. What's your answer? You know, I would say he's a guy who's definitely made a name for himself a little bit more recently, but uh, I think it's a team who, who has had very low expectations in the past and a team who I think is really going to step it up this year. I'm really excited to watch Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions this season. I mean, obviously, you know, there is still some question marks on the defensive side of the Wait, wait, you want wait, you want the Lions biting everybody? You want the Lions biting Pat I mean, Mahomes? Yeah, maybe exactly. You know, that like I said, you know, there's definitely I think still some question marks on the defensive side of the ball. But you look at that offense, man. Jared Goff has been in the league for a long time. He knows how to win football games. It's not always the prettiest. But you know he's he's a he's a quarterback who's good enough for with the weapons around him he's going to be able to win some football games this year. Obviously, they bring in um, uh, Jamar Gibbs, an electric rookie running back, who I think is going to make some big moves this season. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the best young wide receivers in the NFL. Of course, your boy Sam Laporta, uh, and then they bring in. Um, DeAndre Swift from Philadelphia. I mean, it's you mean money? You mean money? Sorry, David David Montgomery from Chicago. You're right. 
It's uh, they've added a lot of weapons to a team who already has some strong weapons on offense. And you know, Dan Campbell is going to have that team ready to play each and every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, holiday, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I think Dan Campbell and the Lions, you know, if that defense can hold things together and at least keep games close enough for Jared Goff and that off and, and that young Detroit Lions offense to make some moves. I think they have a chance to win some to win some football games and put together a pretty good season, especially a, a pretty good season when it comes to uh, the expectations in the past of Detroit Lions fans. Uh, you're just saying it because the Lions play them overnight, right? I'm not. You know, it's uh, and I'm not just saying that because Dan Campbell uh, was the former interim head coach of the Miami Dolphins, but uh, no, I've always liked Dan Campbell. I liked him when he was in Miami. I, you know, I always kind of thought he might take the full-time uh, gig after after a successful interim run. But, you know, it's it, it I, I see a lot in myself when it comes to the Detroit Lions. I see a lot in what we've seen in the, in the Dolphins, pretty much insignificant for the last 20 years, and finally trying to turn things around and, uh, and win some football games. Uh, two teams that seemingly every expert I keep hearing talk uh, talks about, I keep hearing – Talked about on every network, particularly a full letter or a full letter network, where Spectrum users might may or may not be able to see games, but that's another story. Uh, the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. Out of those teams, do you think do you think either of them is a viable playoff and or super Super Bowl threat? I mean, Super Bowl, no. Uh, honestly, I think the Jets have too many question marks, uh, specifically on the offensive line. Aaron Rodgers is not getting any younger. He didn't look that great in his last season with Green Bay last year. Obviously, he won it out. Obviously, there was a lot of drama behind the scenes there. But And, you know, I think he is going to be a step up, and it is going to be a little bit more about business when it comes to Aaron Rodgers this season. But that offensive line is bad. And I'm just – I'm not fully bought in on the Jets. I know their de- their defense is great, but it all comes down to putting the pieces together. And, uh, you know, I do think they will be in the playoff race. I, I think they, they have a good shot at making the playoffs if the cards fall the right way. But, again, it's a stacked AFC, and there's going to be some good teams in the AFC who miss the playoffs this year. There's too many teams. There's more than seven good teams in the AFC, and uh, a couple teams and a couple – uh, fan bases are going to be heartbroken. I definitely think the Jets have a good shot at the playoffs. And do I think they're locked for the playoffs? Definitely not. Do I think that they're Super Bowl contenders? Definitely not. As far as the Cowboys go, it's always the Cowboys year. So, you know, that, at least that's what their fans are saying. They've got a solid team. I think, you know, moving on from Ezekiel Elliott, you know, it was time. I think it was time for both parties to move on. Tony Pollard has stepped up as the number one guy. They've got a fantastic receiving core with C.D. Lamb uh, so kind of leading the way. You know, Dak Prescott, can he stay healthy? I think that's the biggest question mark for them. The NFC isn't as stacked as the AFC, so I think they do have an easier path to the playoffs. Of course, they have the Philadelphia Eagles standing in their way when it comes to winning that division. Uh, do I think they'll win the division? Absolutely not. I think the Eagles will uh, pretty much have that wrapped up pretty uh uh, pretty pretty early into uh, into the playoff run, but um, you know I do think the Cowboys can make can make a shot at the playoffs. I don't think that again, similar to the and I, I and I find them very on on a very even playing field as the Jets. Do I think they'll make the playoffs? I think the Cowboys have a better shot to make the playoffs than the Jets just because the NFC is weaker. Do I think they'll make the Super Bowl? No. I'll tell you what. I see a scenario where both the Jets and Cowboys don't make the playoffs this year. That's a hot take for you. Yeah. That's a hot take. I I, I can see it too, Dylan. You know, I, I think one of them probably will. I know people are going to compare the New York Jets with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they got a third, they got a GOAT quarterback, Tom Brady. But you know what? They all differences between the Jets and Bucks. The, the Bucks coaching staff was very, was more veteran lane. Bruce Arians have been in the NFL a long time. Offensive mind coach. Yeah. Great defensive coach and Todd Bowles. The Bucks had great weapons with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. They had a good offense line. They needed one more guy in Tristan Wolves. And a really good defense. Uh do you have, I mean have, 
Uh, the Jets are going to go with, what, a 37, 38-year-old left tackle and a guy who's – and Makai Becton as their tackles. I'm just saying, uh, that it's not the best offensive line for a quarterback who won't be – who, A, won't want to run around and, B, won't want to be hit. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that clip of Aaron Rodgers in preseason, but uh, he definitely doesn't look like he's the most mobile at uh, at this day and age. So, uh, you know, he might be running for his life a little bit, and uh, you better hope that Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall can step up and be healthy and be able to be consistent in that running back room because they need a strong run game to be able to support that offensive line. And – I look at I look at this situation very similar to when the Jets got another Hall of Fame quarterback at the end of his career from Green Bay. Who was who was said quarterback? Oh, Brett Favre. Bingo. Yeah. And you know what happened? Brett Favre's one and only season with the Jets. I don't remember much success. The Jets didn't make the playoffs, and. Who won the division for, like, the only time in, like, 20-something years? I think we uh, had a little help from uh, a certain Tom Brady injury, but uh, I'll never forget that game where we beat the Jets to make the playoffs. With the the Jets with the former Jet quarterback, Chad Pennington. Yeah. That was one of the happiest days as a Dolphins fan for me. I mean, trust me, I'm never going to forget that. And I I don't think the Jet fans will either in the other way. Yeah, I agree. So, quickly, before we get into a wild card, a uh, division wild card and Super Bowl picks, Alex, who's going to win MVP this year? MVP? I mean, I. it's going to be a great race, as it always is. MVP is a quarterback award, so as much as you'd like to give it to the Justin Jeffersons of the world or the Jamar Chases of the world, it's a quarterback award. I've got to give it to the guy who I think is on the, the the most complete team, who is my Super Bowl favorite, which is going to be a bit of a spoiler um, for the rest of this episode. But. Wait a minute! 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 I know who it. I know what it. I know who it is. I know what it is. What did he go to Louisiana State University? No. What did he? Wait, did he go to LSU? Nope. No, no, no. You are not picking. Did he go to Alabama? He sure did. You thought you had me there, Dylan. You thought you had me. The end no, of the NFL season this year is going to be Jalen Hurts. He is on the most complete team in the NFL. The the Philadelphia Eagles should be and are the Super Bowl favorites this year, in my opinion. And Jalen Hurts is going to do some things that we've never seen at the quarterback position this year. He's got a stacked roster. He is incredible. He can do it in the air. He can do it on the ground. The the, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles are going to get redemption from last season, which, again, is going to be a spoiler for later in this episode. But you ask me MVP, it's going to be Jalen Hurts. Well, you've got the right initials, <laughs> but, you, but you've got the wrong quarterback, youngin. Such a bad take, Dylan. This is such a bad take. You've got the wrong. You've got the wrong quarterback. Justin Herbert's going to win MVP. Oh. Tell me why. I'll tell, I'll tell you why. You talk about weapons: Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quinton Johnson. Oh yeah, and some guy named Austin Echo. Plus, Kellen Moore's going to open up the offense this year. The Chargers aren't going to be this think and dunk offense. They're actually going to throw the ball and use Justin Herbert's big home. And you're going to find out about it week one. Justin Herbert, the biggest problem with Justin Herbert and his MVP race is how unclutch he is. How many game losing interceptions have you seen Justin Herbert? Uncl- Wait, unclutch? Was unclutch? Why didn't they give Austin Eckler the ball when they were up 27 nil in the playoff game last year? The amount of fourth quarter, two-minute drives that I've seen Justin Herbert throw the ball away to the other team, I think he'll be better, and I think the Chargers will be better, but he will not be MVP better. I'm sorry, Dylan. And you mentioned Keenan Allen last season. Where was Keenan Allen for the whole first half of the season last year? Injured. Did he get older? Yes, he did. The Chargers consistently, year after year, are one of the most injured teams in the NFL. They 
They stabbed their own quarter. The trainer stabbed their own quarterback and caused them to miss a game a couple of years back. If you don't remember the Tyron Taylor situation, it's I. I just I don't have faith in the Chargers. I don't have faith in Justin Herbert to be able to sustain that. I think he will. Sh- I think Justin Herbert will show MVP caliber moments, but will he be able to sustain it for an entire NFL season? I don't see it. I think you're full of Philly. Well, fine. We'll find out. And Justin Herbert's going to start his season 0 and 1 on Sunday. Wait, you mean 0 and 1 because wait, 0 and 1 because he'll give you a loss, or he'll get, or he'll give the Miami Dolphins a loss, or give your fantasy team a loss? Justin Herbert and San Diego, and San Diego Chargers. Look, I can't even remember what city they play in. They don't even have fans showing up to their stadium in LA. The Chargers will be 0 and 1 after the after the Miami game this season. Miami will start the season hot. And uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, a pretty bad look for your Justin Herbert MVP shout after uh, after he goes down to Miami this weekend. All right, Dylan, it's time to make some picks. We uh, we've talked about our preview long enough. I want to know first things first: divisional wild card. Who do you see coming out? Who do you see coming into the playoffs? And who do you see you know taking these W's in the, when the playoffs really start start to get rolling? Oh, uh, where are we starting? AFC or NFC? Let's start in the AFC. Okay, I'll go west to east. West, Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, north, Bengals. Yeah. South, Jaguars. East, Buffalo. <laughs> Wild card. Chargers, Miami, Pittsburgh. All right. You want me to go AFC or do you want to go NFC? You now you go. All right. I'm gonna go east to west. Actually, no. I'll go west to east. I will do west Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, in the south, the Jacksonville Jaguars. In the north, the Cincinnati Bengals. And in the east. It's so tough. The East is the toughest division in the NFL this year. I'm going to lock in my Miami Dolphins. Again, I see question marks with the Bills. I see question marks with the Jets. I see question marks with the Dolphins. But I got to go with my heart, and I think the Dolphins have the highest potential of any of those teams this season. I'm going to go with the Dolphins in the AFC East. As I far as wild I think, depends, I think it depends on whether Tua plays. If Tua plays all 17 games, Miami's got a darn good chance. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he will. I think that I think that uh, jujitsu falling training that he took, we already saw it. Look up the clips on Twitter. You've already seen him putting it to use in preseason. Uh, as far as the wild card goes, I think you got to give the Bills a wild card spot because I picked Miami out of the East. I think another wild card team that we will see will be the Chargers. And then for my third and final wild card team, it's close between. I'm. There's so many good teams in the AFC. I, the Jets are in the running. The Steelers are in the running. The Ravens are in the running. Um, I'm going to give it to the New York Jets. I think three teams out of the AFC will make the playoffs this year. Wow, that means neither of us picked the Ravens. I know. I almost picked the Ravens. It was between the Ravens and the Jets for me. But I think the Jets will just be good enough. NFC. Me first. All right. In the West, it's got to be the San Francisco 49ers. In the North, I have – in the North, I'm going to – It's that's a bad division this year, man. Um, I'm going to skip the North. In the South, I mean. I meant that – I was talking about the South. I was talking about the South. And the North, I'm going okay, – the North is an interesting division this year. I'm going to give it to Minnesota. I think they are I'm – I'm going to give it to Minnesota. I'm not even going to address it. In the East, I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. And in the South, it's such a toss-up to me. Um, I'm – in the South, I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints. I think Derek Carr can come in, and I think he's going to turn around a lot of what we've seen. Chris Olave is a beast. 
And uh, Javante Williams and Alvin Kamara will be a formidable duo in the backfield once Kamara comes back. As far as wildcard teams, um, I'm going to give the – what did I say, Philly? I'm going to give the New York Giants a wild card spot. I'm going to give the uh, Dallas Cowboys a wild card spot and – could be a surprise to many. I'm going to give the Chicago Bears a wild card spot. Justin Fields and DJ Moore are going to have a connection this year, and it's going to be electric. Boy, boy, you, you all NFC picks are going to be uh, all over the map this year. Uh, NFC West, I think it's San Francisco. No. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, it's been a more noisy offseason with the Trey Lance saga, but uh, let me get, let me guess: Christian McCaffrey, Depot Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Trent Williams, now Nick Bosa, but Fred Warner. Yeah, I'll, I'll take That's that. Out. Yeah, uh, you're wrong in the NFC North because the Detroit Lions are going to win the division. I think the Lions were a little unlucky not to make the playoffs last year. Minnesota's not going 11 and 0 in one score games. You you and I both know that. Yeah, I should have picked Detroit as well. If I, I think Detroit is easily, plus, there's always like three or four new playoff teams a year. I think the Lions, I mean, true, Detroit's first round draft might have been a little funky. I, I don't think anybody's got a great defense in that division. I think the Lions got the best offensive line. Aiden Hutchinson scares a living the jeepers out of me. Yeah. Plus, they can go. They can go one-two punch with Monty, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ra, Laporta. I mean, I'm with James and Williams had not damn with away this season, but that's a story for another bet. Uh, NFC. Uh, do we have to mention NFC South this year? I, I I think that's a bad division. I mean, be honest with you, I think the Cleveland Browns could end up winning the NFC South, but long division. Uh, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this much: the Carolina Panthers are going to win the NFC South because they've got the best quarterback and coach in that division. That division is terrible. There's not a good pick in that division. <laughs> I'd rather flee the fifth in that division. And in the uh, yeah, you know, like the NFC East used to be the least. Without the NFC East, it's like the beast, or maybe yeah. the NFC East. And uh, Philly, oh. when the, the Philly Stephens won't be the same. We'll see what happens with losing both coordinators, but Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, 59 running backs, Jason Kelsey. I think the defense will be good enough. Wild card, uh, Seattle. I really like Seattle. I mean, who, I don't know if Gino can be this good two years in a row, but Seattle's good. Seattle's, good. Seattle's young. I think Seattle next year is going to be a – Dark Horse Super Bowl pick. Wow. Yeah. Super Bowl pick. Wow. That's cool. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, next year, Seattle Seahawks future might not be a bad idea. Uh, I do like Minnesota. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with Kirk Cousins this year, whether it's his last year in Minnesota. But Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, yeah, I think the Vikings will miss Salva Cook. Vikings won't go 11 and 0 in one score games, and defensively, I don't think they could stop a nosebleed. Yeah. And and uh, I've got to have somebody in the NFC East. The New York Football Giants are going to be the wild card in the NFC East because I don't trust Mike McCarthy calling plays. I trust Brian Dable calling plays. Even though I don't think Jander Jones is a great quarterback, the Giants all season was. Quite. Yeah. Other than Saquon holding out for an hour. Yeah. yeah, the Giants don't have any wide receivers, but I don't but I don't trust the cap if the Cowboys have one Tony Pollard or CD Lamb injury, that offense that offense doesn't excite me. I don't think Dak hasn't been the same quarterback since the ankle injury a few years ago. He's more a pocket passer through <laughs> 15 interceptions in 12 games last year. That can't happen. Yeah. And I'm just going to say this, Dylan. Even still, 
the coaching ha- is is definitely going to be a question mark. But watch out for the Washington football team this year. The Commanders. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you wait, I'm not. You I'm not, I'm not are you into that same hell talk now? I am. I am talking that same hell talk. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs. I'm not saying they're going to have a winning record. But I think they're going to do. I think the command, the Commanders, the football team, I don't even know what they are anymore. I think the Washington Commanders will do better than a lot of people expect. And I think Sam Howell is going to look a lot better than a lot of people expect him to as well. They've got some talent on that offensive side of the football. They've got some talent on the defensive side of the football. Again, don't think they're making the playoffs. I don't think that they will even necessarily have a winning record. But I think they'll win a couple more games than people expect. I wish, I wish Ron, I wish they had somebody else coaching a team rather than Ron Rivera, maybe a competent offensive mind head coach, but I, you digress. But the story is I mean, we'll see whether Eric Bianami can coach without Andy Reid under his over his shadow. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to watch, that's for sure. You know what would be more interesting? Who will end up in the playing in Las Vegas for the Lombardi Trophy. You want me to go first? Well, I think my NFC pick has already been made clear based on my MVP pick, but I don't see a more complete team in the NF more complete team in the NFL than the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, if if you ask me where their holes are, I mean, they back up defensive back, backup quarterback. Other than that, I don't see any holes on that football team. It's just, it's from top to bottom, it is stacked. I think the Philadelphia Eagles are almost a shoe in in the NFC, unless something crazy happens to make the Super Bowl. They are that good, Dylan. They should have won the Super Bowl last year. And then in the AFC, it's, it's a complete coin toss. I mean, there's five teams that could come out of the, that could come out of the AFC this year. Honestly, I mean, the one team that's, that keeps kind of popping in my mind, who I think I'm going to pick on this episode just because I can't decide, I have to pick someone, I'm going to give it to the Cincinnati Bengals. I think they <laughs> – I, I might have taken your pick there. I'm not sure. But uh, honestly, there's no explanation for it other than Joe Burrow, uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, it's uh, Joe Mixon. They've got the weapons. They know what it takes to win and get to a Super Bowl. They've done it before. And uh, I definitely think they can do it again. Obviously, the Kelsey injury is something that Chiefs fans aren't very happy about, uh, as we talked about at the, at the head of this show. And uh, whether that lingers for the season, who who knows? Will Travis Kelsey be the guy that we've seen? He's getting older. Who knows? The AFC East, three of those teams could potentially go to the Super Bowl. The Jacksonville Jaguars could potentially go to the Super Bowl. I mean, it is an absolute eight-sided coin flip in the AFC in the AFC this year but uh I've got a I'm locking in a Cincinnati Bengals Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl with the Eagles winning 31 to 23 as usual Alex you are dead wrong <laughs> you are dead wrong right. I'm going back to a, a Super Bowl in Miami uh, the San Francisco 49ers are going to stop playing NFC Championship games and playing Super Bowls. And who are they playing? The Browns? It's going to be a rematch of Super Bowl 29 because the San Francisco 49ers aren't going to play the San Diego Chargers this time. They're going to play the Los Angeles Chargers. You're dead wrong, Dylan. You said I'm wrong. I first... Uh... I don't think Brock Purdy is going to take the San Francisco 49ers to a Super Bowl. I don't I just it's the Eagles are so good. Something something would have have to happen. Something I can't predict here on September 6, 2023, but you know, I I have the Eagles almost as a lock. I the AFC is wide open, you know, I'll give you the Chargers. It could be any of those top teams that we've talked about throughout this episode, but you know, that's why they play the games. I cannot wait to watch them. It's going to be a fun NFL year. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see who's closer at the end of the day. Okay, Alex. I mean, uh, I didn't think we have this much disagreement with all playoff and Super Bowl picks this year. 
I mean, we love to go against each other, and it just makes it more fun when uh, when the when the cards do get put in. All right. So thanks for swimming upstream with me. Hopefully, uh, everything goes right. We all every every player stays healthy, and uh, every game turns into a 70-68 shootout. Exactly. I'll see you for a Miami Dolphins, Jacksonville Jaguars AFC Championship game this year. Ben's up, baby.